Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Versus Video Deck Tech. Uh, CVM here, joined once again by... BBD. And we are battling some sweet decks with Magic Origins, uh, since the set will be coming out fairly soon. We're in the middle of spoiler season. Then we have a bit of a treat. Uh, we are running back the old Elves versus Goblins, and I'm on the Elves half. So let's go ahead and dive in and see what awesome new cards we have. And as you can see from the Sea of White, uh, there are a lot of new cards. Uh, so... Coming into Magic Origins, there really is just only a handful of playable elves. Yep. Uh, you have like Elvish Mystic, Reclamation Sage. That was basically about it. Yep. Uh, but we get a bunch of new ones. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive in and see what those are going to add to the deck. Uh, so Gnarl Root Trapper is a black elf uh, that is just another mana accelerant, but we can only use the mana to cast elf spells. Elf creature spells, it actually specifies it. So No nameless inversions. No nameless inversions, but we can cast all of the other sweet elves in, that we have in the deck. Uh, Elvish Visionary gets a reprint, uh, which is always great value. Uh, Dwinin's Elite uh, is very reminiscent of like Mog War Marshal. It's just a 2-2 two, two for 2, but if you have another elf when it comes into play, you get a 1-1 one, one elf token, uh, oh, which is just going to be great value since we have a bunch of elves in our deck. Uh, Nissa Vastwood Seer uh, is also an elf, which is pretty sweet. And... Uh, she just works very well in this type of deck. Uh, previously, elf decks would want to play like Sylvan, uh, Sylvan Ranger, or like a Borderline Ranger type deck. Um, and so we get that same effect here where we get to search out a land. Uh, it'll thin our deck, smooth our draws a little bit. But also, it's just a three mana planeswalker. So if we ever get to flip it to the backside of Nissa Sage Animist, um, you know, all of the abilities are, are very relevant. The plus one. Reveal the top card if it's a land that goes into play. If it's a non-land that goes in your hand, it's just great card advantage. You can minus two to make a four-four legendary token, and the minus seven actually just wins the game since it gives you thirty-six power of creatures. Yep, that also untapped too. Yeah, that also untapped. So, is this? It's just, it's a great card all around, and honestly, it's my pick for the best card in the set. It's not even all the way spoiled yet, but I feel like this is just going to be the best card. Uh, it's definitely an extremely powerful card. Um, it's it's just a good value creature on its front side, and the Planeswalker is actually, out of all the flip Planeswalkers, I think it's maybe the most powerful. It definitely has, uh, being able to plus one for Coiling Oracle's ability is actually really good. Mm -hmm. And it's just, the back side is something that I would expect to pay five mana for, and we're going to be getting it for three mana a lot of the times, because all it requires you to do is something that you want to do, play lands. Yep. Uh, and then we have the card that gives us the most payoff for being in the Elf Tribe is Shaman of the Pack. So the main reason that we are in two colors, uh, alongside Gnarl Root Trapper, of course, but it's one green-black for a 3-2, and when it comes into play, target opponent loses life equal to the number of elves you control. So as we can see here, we have a lot of elves. Yeah. And the hope is to do big chunks of damage with Shaman of the Pack, uh, and one of the sweet ways that we can get there is with Collected Company, since it has only cost three mana, so we can find it off Collected Company. And with Court of Calling, will allow us to search them out of our deck. So I, I imagine that there'll be games with this deck where we have uh, four elves in play. We cast Collected Company, find two Shaman of the Pack, hit our opponent for 12, and then tap our six creatures to get another Shaman of the Pack and hit our opponent for seven. That's 19 damage, just right off that. That sounds pretty good. Uh, and I don't think that type of scenario is going to be too far-fetched with the number of elves that we're going to have in play. Uh, we also have a Reclamation Sage, since it is an elf. We get some value off of it. And a Sylvan Messenger, which is a reprint. Uh, a lot of people thought it was just a color-shifted Goblin Ringleader, uh, but it was part of a cycle in Apocalypse, Goblin Ringleader. Uh, all of the different colors had tribes, and Sylvan Messenger was the elf. So it didn't see a whole lot of play, uh, but it is just Goblin Ringleader for elves. Uh, we can't find it with Collected Company, so I do only have one in the deck to Court of Calling for. Um, since we're, we're not jam-packed with elves, like one of the ways you could build the deck. Uh, but I think it's still pretty sweet, and I, I could end up seeing a perversion of this deck with just no cords and four silver messengers. Yeah. Uh, the last new card that we have is Dwinin Guiltleaf Dayan. A bunch of words, I don't know what they mean. <laughs> but it's a lord. So two green green for a 3-4 reach. Uh, gives all of your other elves plus one plus one. And when it attacks, you get to gain one life for each attacking elf. So just a little bit of value added onto it. Uh, it is legendary, so we don't really want to be running a whole bunch. I do currently only have one, since we can't find it with company, but we can get it with cord if we need to. 
Uh, it could just end up being that we just want a bunch of those and messengers and just play an elf beat down deck. Uh, but this is the first time battle of it, so we just get to find out. Since we are in black, we do have the liberty of playing some removal spells. So I kind of went with a varied suite of removal spells here just to try and get an idea of what's going to be good. Uh, two ultimate price, a downfall, and a bile blight. Uh, just something that kind of spans you know, the different things that we might need. Yep. Ultimate price and bile blight are good against cheaper creatures. Uh, that can also hit something like Stone Breath Dragon with ultimate price. Um, course of Crucifix. Downfall is just good at killing whatever you need it to kill. Uh, and since we have quite a bit of black mana in our mana base without giving up too much, we can afford the double black. Yeah, you actually have like 15 sources or something. So Yeah, so we do have uh, you know some basics here. Uh, a couple mana confluence to help help out with the double black spells and Urborg uh, and then the eight different dual lands. Uh, so Warden Catacombs would be nice, but we don't have it yet. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe, maybe in a couple sense. months, yeah. Uh, but this is the elf deck. I'm actually pretty excited to give it a try. Uh, I feel like I'm going to be a little disadvantaged against like Wild Slash and stuff out of the Goblins deck, but if there's games where you don't have cheap removal early and I get the ball rolling, I feel like I can just kind of take over the game. I think game this guy's going to be really good. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like even against like the decks that don't have a lot of removal, that guy's going to be real good. Yep. Just good old-fashioned two-for-one. <laughs> But let's go ahead and take a look at the sideboard and see what other sweet options we have. All right, we're back with the sideboard for the green-black elves deck. Uh, and as we can see here, it's a little bit scattered. So the, the first clump I want to look at is we have four Den Protector. And this is going to be uh, the type of card that we're going to want to board against things that are going to have sweepers against us. So yep. Drown in Sorrow, you know, Languish, a new card coming out, uh, Crux of Fate, and Hostilities, and those types of things. Because those those decks are also the same decks that we want to bring in Thoughtseize. So boarding into something like Den Protector Thoughtseize is going to be just a really good strategy to be proactive and handle cards in their hand that are problematic, but also rebuy some powerful cards once uh, they actually start interacting with us. So uh, getting back like Collected Company, Court of Calling, Sylvan Messenger with a Den Protector is going to be pretty sweet. We have some more, some more removal with three Self-Inflicted Wound. Uh, very good at getting rid of something like Corsair Crucifix, which since we don't have many ways to make creatures not be able to block will be a big problem for a deck like this. Also things like Fleece Main Lion and, and the like. Yep, Fleece Main Lion, uh, Sylvan Carry to Rakshasa Death Dealer. Self-Inflicted Wound is just very good at interacting with all the cheap creatures in the format. It's also good with Shaman of the Pack, is that what his name is? Mm -hmm. uh, that deals, you know, just any incremental damage is good when you have a creature that kind of fireballs your opponent. For sure. Uh, another ultimate price and another bio blight to go along with removal spells in the main. Then we have some singletons that we can fetch, or uh, a couple singletons that we can fetch with Court of Calling, uh, Nihilist Disciple to try and gain some life. Uh, we have a second Sylvan Messenger just to bring in against decks that are going to try and attrition us out, yep. just as a way to draw cards. And then Hunt, to, Hunt the Hunter is just another removal spell uh, for if we happen to be in a mirror match type thing. Uh, but it's also going to be good, a good way to kill opposing Nissas and gain value off of it. Uh, so uh, there's, I can imagine some turns where we'll go like Mana Elf into Nissa, they play a Corsair, we just get to hunt the Hunter on Nissa and kill their Corsair and attack for a bunch of damage, which seems pretty sweet. Yeah, it's good against Corsair, Nissa, Fleece Main, um, sometimes even Rhino if you have a big enough creature. So. Yep, uh, and there's also going to be some corner case scenarios where we can attack, give our attacking creature Death Touch to end of turn with Gnarl Root Trapper, and then let it fight something post-combat while it still has Death Touch, which is kind of cool. Yeah, as long as it doesn't trade in combat. Yeah, as long as it doesn't trade in combat. Uh, so that is the sideboard for the Green-Black Elf deck. Uh, make sure you stick around to check out the battles. Check out BBD's deck tech for his Dirty Little Goblins. And mm -hmm. yeah. see what happens. All right.